find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 108. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters from the Mayhem Studio here in Pittsburgh, PA. Video producer with a couple of groups here in the area, including the International Wrestling Cartel and the Renegade Wrestling Alliance. With me, my compatriot from San Antonio, Texas. He is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, more from the Austin area, of course, he's Eamon Payton. How you doing, sir? Hello, Sorg. Happy to be here as always. Always happy to talk about indie wrestling i'm very excited for this week's episode so yeah i'm feeling good awesome well we got an awesome awesome guest here uh with us tonight but first please go check out this and so many other episodes of the indie mayhem show 107 fantastic interviews uh that we've had over the uh, last uh, two plus years uh with people in the wrestling industry uh in in all aspects all aspects and uh subscribe on on, on itunes on stitcher spreaker uh youtube facebook we got video audio versions of all the shows and of course you can drop us a line to the email address good times at wrestling mayhem show Dot com or 412-206-WMS0. Um, you know, let us know questions for anybody we have coming up for an uh, interview, anybody you think we should talk to, any thoughts or uh, indie wrestling that we may not be talking about on the show. Uh, please do that there. We'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, so let's get into it tonight. Eamon, I'm excited for our guest. Uh, it's a long time coming uh, uh, to, to get her on here. Ray Lynn joining us on the show tonight. How you doing? I'm doing good. You're good. Just got done training, so I'm just relaxing and <laughs> trying to get some protein in. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and I know you, you've been making the rounds. I've been seeing your name pop up a lot of very interesting places, so I want to get into that here in a little bit. Uh, but first of all, you know, kind of the precursor of this show is you know a lot of people in wrestling for whatever you know whatever method they are into wrestling uh, are there because they're fans so tell me what was kind of your first um, um kind of exposure um our earliest memory perhaps of uh of pro wrestling um when i was younger i grew up with um all boy cousins and they loved wrestling so i remember watching the undertaker and all that i remember them power bombing me onto whatever it could be it's like so at a pretty young age i first saw wrestling and I, don't know, I thought it was pretty awesome. Awesome. So how did you go from that to, to actually getting in the ring? So I had quit watching wrestling from like middle school to high school. Um, I started working at this bar when I was about 19 years old. And um, there were patrons that came in every Monday to watch Raw. And I was like, oh, guys, this is stupid. Like, why do you want to watch this? This is pretty dumb. Um I ended up so into it, like way more into it than them. Like to the point when Monday night football came on, I said, no, we got to watch raw. Um, so I was just like, I'm going to do this. Like, why can I not do this? I'm pretty athletic. Like I'm going to get into this. Uh, it took me a while after that. I, I was still bartending and cutting hair. Uh, after a while, um, just things in life kept happening. And I decided that it was time. Like, it was time to start wrestling. So I took the steps. I quit my job cutting hair. I moved to Kentucky, and I started training at OVW. That's awesome. And this is OVW. Uh, just to kind of uh, clarify time frames for this, I know a lot of people probably have heard of Ohio Valley Wrestling as kind of the uh, 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 feeder system, uh, developmental system for WWE. This is this is well after that time had passed, correct? Yes, it was. I think it was... Um, TNA developmental whenever I went down. Mm, nice. Nice. Uh, so nice. whenever it came to wrestling schools, I was like thinking, oh, this is a big decision. It's like going to college, mm -hmm. you know? So I checked out schools around my area and I checked out different schools and I was like, well, OVW is the Harvard of professional wrestling school. So I'm going to go to Harvard, you know? That's awesome. That's awesome. So how was that experience there? Did you see a lot of influence from it being a TNA developmental? Um, or what, what, what kind of guys were in there um, kind of, kind of uh, uh, spreading uh, their knowledge? Um, so my original trainer was Nick Eugene Dinsmore. Uh, nice. He's awesome. He's amazing. Very talented. Um, I did learn quite a bit from him. 
uh, he got signed to NXT about six months into my training. So I was, after he left, I was trained by Al Snow and Trailer Park Trash. Al Snow was awesome because I learned so much about character development from him and like way in, um, just ways to think about what my character is and what it would do. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and from there, like, you know, you know, women's wrestling, we talk about a lot of the show, uh, about how it's being represented, uh, kind of throughout indie wrestling, uh, through some groups that have, you know, obviously you, you've been involved with AIW and they have their girls night out and, and even seen it kind of pop up a bit more. And I think partially thanks to, to your presence there in uh, international wrestling cartel. Um, what, uh, what do you think about the state of, of women's wrestling when you're coming into it? Were you concerned about kind of finding spots to work or uh, what were kind of your thoughts at that point? When I started at OVW, um, there were a ton of girls there. So they were giving us a push at the time. Um, as it kept going on, after a few months, like whenever I was finally like ring ready, a lot of the girls were moving. They were having babies. They were getting married. So by the time I was ready, there was no one really left. There was like two or three of us left in the locker room. So... I was like in this situation where I wasn't really getting to wrestle and I wasn't really getting any better. I was very stagnant. Um, so coming into the business, I was really concerned. I was like, well, how am I ever going to get better if I don't ever get to wrestle? Uh, so eventually it came up to the point where I was like, am I going to stay here at OVW or am I going to go somewhere else and try to train somewhere else. And that's when me and Dylan made the decision to move to Pittsburgh, which is where I'm from. That's awesome. And of course, you know, you've been a big part of uh, IWC, uh, working with, uh, uh, pretty extensively with, uh, one, uh, more of a newer girl, uh, in, uh, Britt Baker, who's of, of course also been on the show as well. Yeah. Um, it's a good opportunity for both of us. Um, you know, IWC really never had a women's wrestling and we came in and, and I think we're there to like prove something that we're just as good as the guys. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so, and you've been getting out a bit, uh, uh, like, like I mentioned, I know you've popped up a bit on uh, ring of honor as well, correct? Yeah. Um, in October, I was lucky enough to have a ring of honor match for women of honor against Kelly Klein she knocked my head off, but you know, <laughs> everything's a start with a foot in the door. I'm currently in Detroit right now. I am training with Truth Martini at the House of Truth. Nice. He is doing like a women of honor kind of boot camp thing. We're learning a lot. So. Awesome. How's that uh, working with Truth? I know um, uh, a friend of ours, uh, Chris Russo, uh, I apparently uh, did did some work with him with Ring of Honor recently, and says, and, and of course I, I've worked with him a bit on finding Zach Gowan. Um, he seems to be an interesting guy and very knowledgeable as well. Just he is so incredible. Um, the way he explains things, the way he talks, it really intrigues you. It draws you in. It makes you want to do better. It's just training's really. Like, it's long days. Like, today we started at 2 and we got done at 10. Um, so it's a long days, but you don't even feel like you're there for a long time because you're so intrigued by what's going on and everything's so in-depth. Mm -hmm. Awesome. He's he's just amazing. Great. Um, Eamon, I, I wanted to make sure uh, I'm not cutting you out here. Do you have any questions for Raylan here? No, definitely. Because... Um, as Sword mentioned, it seems that you're starting to break out a lot in, you know, top level, you know, places for female talents like Ring of Honor and AIW. Um, do you think the, uh, I guess the best way to put it, do you think the market, so to speak, has has improved for women? Because I think, uh, I, I think a lot of people, you know, go back to like, you know, years ago in indie wrestling where it was kind of like the sense of, oh, there was one woman's match or show almost, and now... You have companies like Ring of Honor trying to do stuff with the Women of Honor and AIW and other companies having women's sort of sh women's shows and and really develop women's rosters. Do you think do you think that's a, a 
growing trend? And do you see that a lot more is that there's more opportunities for women uh, to compete? There are definitely more opportunities for women athletes right now because the girls right now on the scene, we're really bringing it. Um, I think women's wrestling is going to a whole nother level, and I just don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. It's just getting bigger from here. It's really awesome. Like some of the girls I meet, like we try to empower each other, you know, and just try to keep going. Awesome. Very cool. Awesome. I, I, I have to, uh, we have some, a live chat room going here at live at wrestling com, And, uh, I want to give shout outs from, uh, um, uh, Trey Gar says, uh, Hey, your number one fan says hello. Uh, so, <laughs> and, Hi, Trey. and our, our buddy Garza from down in El Paso says his number two fan, your number two fan also says hello. So I want to get those <laughs> shout outs out there while this was going on. Um, all right. So, uh, so we, we you know, uh, uh, you got uh, some uh, great stuff going coming up here. Of course, proving grounds uh, as we're recording this is this weekend. Um, uh, it, it, this has been labeled as the final battle between you and Britt Baker, of course. Um, but you always say never say never in wrestling, right? I don't think it's the final battle. <laughs> I don't think it'll be the last time I come face to face with Britt Baker. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's um um she she's definitely a little greener than than, than you are. Um, just debuting, I think. Probably, but July, I think, uh, last year, if, I, if my date's correct. Um, what is it between you two that, that seems to be gelling so much? Um, we're just both really competitive. We're very, very competitive. Um, and we've worked together quite a bit. And I just feel like I always want to step it up when I'm with her. I think we both want to be like, oh, I'm the better one. Oh, no, I'm the better one. So something with that. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, 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 and you know, you guys, like I said, have been part of kind of the, the resurgence of women's wrestling in or surgeons. I guess there really hasn't been a lot of it in, in IWC. Um, you know, and, and, of course, you've seen Angel Dust. You've seen Marty Bell come in. Uh, what's it like to be on the forefront of that, at least for a promotion like this, that, that has such a, a, a name over the years? Oh, it's incredible. Like, Especially whenever I get the chills thinking about it, like we were in the first ever women's tag match there, mm-hmm. like, and it is a, a reputable name. A lot of amazing talent has come through that door, and just to be like the f- first women's tag match there, that's just it's mind blowing. Awesome, awesome. We've been we've been bugging about it, but uh, you, you, do you see do you see a women's title happening in that fight? I, it feels like they have enough going on for it. Oh, I hope so. I hope, actually, this is my dream, because someone <laughs> else brought it up. I want me and Britt Baker in a cage match for the women's title. Just saying. Put that out there. We're going to get that, this out to the uh, IWC uh, uh, group. That'd be great, because that's been, I mean, that's been happening a lot, um, um, you know, with, with women's matches. Um, what are you watching for wrestling these days? I do watch a lot of stuff over from, like, Japan because I really would like the opportunity to go over to Japan. Um, I just pay attention to a lot of um, the NXT divas. I watch a lot of female matches, and if I'm going to go back and watch matches, I love watching Brian Pillman matches too. <laughs> oh, Brian. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you take a little bit? What do you take from Brian Pillman? Um, Brian, Brian. I like actually, there's this match um, from Stone Cold and, um, well, actually, the stunning Steve Austin and Brian Pillman. There's some stuff I stole in there. You can see it in one of my AIW matches with uh, Britt Baker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, and one, one question we like to ask, and you can take this any way you want, uh, but uh, what's the best and the worst thing about working indie wrestling? Mm, the best part is it's all about the experience. Everywhere you go, there's a different story that you're going to be able to tell after you've been there. Um, there's such an adrenaline rush. Um, just everything about going to a show, just the people you meet to the fans you meet, it's just it's an adrenaline rush for me. That's my favorite part of it. Um, the worst part of it is sometimes <laughs> the shows aren't really in the best of areas you might find yourself out in the country somewhere or <laughs> somewhere in a ghetto or 
people don't show up, you wrestle in front of two fans. Mm -hmm. uh, you get some crazy promoters that try not to give you all your pay. So <laughs> it tends to be the promoters that cause the biggest issues. I know I, I, I've been to a, a show or two up in uh, the Detroit area and they definitely get a little um, questionable in location. <laughs> <laughs> so um awesome uh so of course like i mentioned up uh, coming up international wrestling cartel proving grounds up in rural valley uh, way outside of pittsburgh but go check it out if you're in the area of course it'll be on dvd and digital download afterwards uh, where else are you popping up here in the in the near future i'm trying to think i think um iwc of course super kick in canada is one of my main promotions i know i'll be back at aiw soon um, geez, there's something really big that I cannot remember right now. I'd have to look at my calendar. I'll have to keep you posted on that. Awesome. Well, you're on, uh, you're on, uh, uh Twitter, uh, Ray, Ray, uh, underscore Lynn. Uh, so go yes. check that out. And I know you're very responsive on there. I see all the likes all the time from, uh, indie wrestling.us. I really appreciate you sharing those out. Um, oh, and, no problem. and we've been getting a great response from you and Britt, um, over on the site as well. Uh, so it's really awesome to see that. See, see a lot of people supporting uh, women's wrestling right now. So do um, you have any advice for any girls that want to get in wrestling at this point? Um, <laughs> this is going to sound kind of mean, but if you want to get into wrestling, know what you're like. You have to be 100% about wrestling and don't be a pussy, basically. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> like, there you go. That'll be our tagline from this show. Raylan says, don't be a pussy. <laughs> oh thank you so much uh thanks for coming on the You're show welcome. uh check her out we'll see you here uh this saturday uh, international wrestling cartels proving ground and all around hit her up on the on the on the social medias as well and thank you everybody for joining us we're going to take a quick look at the uh 10 year anniversary uh for wrestling mayhem show and some more flashback right there in stories and we'll be right back talking some more indie wrestling Well, unfortunately, this thing, Twitter, was invented. And on Twitter, or the Twitters, I started interacting with people around the city of Pittsburgh, with an H. And these people, I played softball with them. And then somehow I became friends with them beyond softball. And then we started talking about techie things, so I was on this other show called Awesome Cast. While it's still on Awesome Cast, Sorg said, oh, hey. You like wrestling. Do you want to stick around for the Mayhem show? And I said, sure. What the hell? So I stuck around for the Mayhem show, and it was the worst experience of my life. We're back. Check out uh, all those videos uh, about the uh, Mayhem 10-year uh, anniversary over at the uh, YouTube page or on Facebook. And uh, thanks to our friends looking for a group for hosting us for that amazing party. It was awesome to hang out with some friends, play some WWE 2K16, and uh, and just have a blast. Amen, 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 amen. Sorg. Amen, 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 amen. Sorg. Bringing the sexy back to Indie Mayhem show. Uh, as we were talking about <laughs> off air, uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling is bringing the sexy over to Austin, Texas, uh, this weekend. I, I know you got a lot going on. We are. Uh, we, we're, we're bringing the sexy back. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Um, yeah, we are with our uh, Faces of Vengeance event, uh, which is this Sunday in Austin, February 28th uh, at the Marquesa Hall and Theater. We got a fun one planned. A uh, lot of talented people on this show. Uh, uh, we got. A lot of cool faces that are going to be there, uh, including a returning uh, Joey Ryan, who you may have seen uh, as recently as yesterday on Sports Center, uh, proposing to his girlfriend mid match. That made Sports Center. It made Sports Center. It made the wow. Rolling Stone. A uh, bunch of other places too. Yeah, I mean it was amazing. So I mean, for those that don't know, so he's he's what's her name? Uh, Laura James, uh, who's a who's a fellow uh, independent wrestler. Right, so so so, the, the, they're in the middle of this match. Referee gets bumped, and then he pull. Uh, she gets knocked down or something, I suppose. I think she's checking on the ref. I she's think. checking on the ref, and he pulls out something and proposes to her in the middle of the ring, and then pins her. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what metaphor that's going to be about their relationship, but jeez, <laughs> uh, it was pretty fantastic. That's a wedding I want to I want to witness. For sure. Yeah, and we mentioned we mentioned uh, 
uh, vi- it's not a word, but virability, I guess, in, in indie wrestling. Uh, and, and I think Joey Ryan kind of has it down at this point of all the stuff that he's been on and doing. And yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's gotten himself out there. And, and yeah, like I said, he will be uh, at our event on, uh, on this Sunday, February 28th. He'll be taking on Cherry Ramones in what could be the sleaziest match that we've ever put on. Um, there's those two men are too similar and it's it's gonna be very exciting to put on that match uh we also have a debut a uh, very exciting debut uh uh jessica james who's our ex division champion will be taking on the debuting Brittany wonder uh who i'm very excited about from the uh, southern california wrestling scene uh from a promotion many people have heard of called hood slam um who's the which is a promotion that does amazing things in that area so different than a lot that you'll see in indie wrestling, and we're very excited to have her uh, competing for us on February 28th. Uh, slam. Yeah, it's slam. a lot of really, a lot of really great matches on this show. Really fun stuff. Uh, if you want more information on it, you can visit InspireProWrestling.com for tickets uh, and more information. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, this Sunday, so you should definitely check us out and 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 be there. Uh, I'll also say uh, you definitely want to go to this show. We we've got a few surprises up our up our sleeve got a few surprises i'll just say that things are gonna happen and you should be there um think cool things will happen that i may <laughs> tell sorg about off air well i uh, don't <laughs> i don't even know about our private chat um they're gonna suspect what i've been saying actually i'm completely out of the loops lately to be quite honest <laughs> 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 i've had other stuff to do uh but uh iwc proving ground is is uh coming back a new new location uh, trying out a new area here north of the city uh, in Rural Valley, PA. Oh, it's going to be a hike. It's going to be a hike out there. I don't know why we're going out that way, but I don't know. I don't I don't book them. I just show up. Uh, <laughs> but like we talked with Ray Lynch, he's going to be there. Uh, the final encounter with Britt Baker. Uh, I'm sure that's going to be great. Uh, Jimmy Nuts versus D- Darren De Niro. Friends of the show uh, collide for the uh, World Heavyweight title. Uh, De Niro actually won that in a, in a, in a, a battle royal. Uh, back in uh, a few months ago uh, fraternity a great new tag team currently the champs uh, take on blue collar slaughterhouse who return and then this is the show where there's a lot of new faces that pop up um first of all i got shouts planet bulk is a tag team taking on our friends the sexy talented dudes if you go back to indie mayhem show and you remember that i don't you know about the STDs. <laughs> None of us do. <laughs> no 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 apparently not no but i hope you do um this is so <laughs> i was really curious about this um, Shane in your face. Yeah, I've heard of Shane in your face. You have heard of him. Okay. What have you so heard from, about from him? you from you folks? Oh, that, oh, that was my fault. Okay. I well, <laughs> so so I heard about him. And I'm like, what? What's the deal with this in your face guy? You know, I mean, that, it kind of caught my attention, and I didn't know what to think about it. Um, turns out, uh, so I, I hit up Plumber. I'm like, dude, what's the deal? He's like, oh yeah, he's like some MMA dude or something, right? I, I don't know. And I'm interpreting off of a off of a Facebook chat, you know, that term. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but whatever. Um, then I end up, ha- and it turns out I have a coffee with his uh, good longtime friend, <laughs> and I learn a little bit more about him uh, through right. other uh, through other means, I guess we can say, um, oddly th- via other podcasts here on this network. Um, that person happens to be a bodybuilder <laughs> and has traveled the world doing bodybuilding, um, currently doing not bodybuilding, not wrestling either, by the way. Um, and this is his good buddy that's been doing MMA for several years and wants to get into wrestling and had a very, I hope, I hope we can, I hope, I hope uh, we can have him on. Cause I, I thought it was an interesting story about how he kind of decided I want to be a wrestler and who he got to meet for that. Um, mm. uh, take a look at this. Like, this is a legit MMA guy. And I want to see what that transition is. And I, I haven't seen uh, knowingly, at least that transition kind of happen on this level with IWC. Um, mm. He's taken on Dylan Bostic. Um, somebody we've had on and he's been all over the place. Um, so that'll be really interesting to see how that turns out as well. Um, so keep an eye out for that as well. Um, super hentai, uh, in what I call match of the math people. Um, so taking out, uh, two newbies and Noctis and, uh, tour in flight. I have no idea who these guys are. Um, so I didn't, they don't wear masks when they're setting up the ring. So I, I, I haven't really been able to tell Chris, Chris LaRusso, 
big time friend of the show, one of our co-conspirators on the uh, Mayhemies uh, uh, selection process, and of course uh, popping up here on TV with Ring of Honor soon ke- taking on ke- uh, friend of the show Keith Hot, old school friends of the show. I think our first interview, sexual harassment. Uh, mm-hmm. Way, 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 way back in the day, and the Gambino brothers, and uh, uh, a few more uh, matches of well, uh, Justin Labar, uh, part of the show as well with uh, his boy Wardlow, and uh, a lot more. Um, but big time, uh, th- this is going to be, uh, you know, a lot of debuts. You never know. Andrew Palace. There's actually matches um, that are on the Facebook and the YouTube for IWC. The first match ever with IWC for Jimmy Nuts and Andrew Palace, who we've talked about on the show and are making lays out there extensively, um, are from Proving Grounds. A lot of people debut uh, Britt Baker that we talked about with Ray Lynn earlier um, from Proving Grounds in July. And look at what she's doing. And now it seems like she's everywhere. Um, you know, it, it's uh, I think it's a really good place to see um, as indie wrestling fans. We're always looking for the next big thing, aren't we, Eamon? Yep. And if you're looking for it from a promotion like IWC that has the pedigree that it does, um, this is this is where to look. And and you'll be surprised who surprises you, you know, uh, when it comes to these shows. So other than that, we'll talk about it in the in, in the near future here. But uh, uh, go to their site. Uh, the 15th anniversary is also coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, already, uh, Coca Band is a part of that, taking on a returning RJ City. Um, um, Zima Ion is going to take on Jimmy Nuts for the title and I think there's going to be a lot of other uh, uh, fun fun stuff coming out there as well so keep an eye on that above all above all Pedro DeLuca comes back so 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 you got me there um, if, if I didn't work the show I'd be paying for the ticket for sure Absolutely. Our, also our friends if you're uh, south of Pittsburgh uh, or want to check this out all these are going to be of course on IndieWrestling.us uh, RWA Fury this is the rescheduled show for the most part of course of uh, their their seventh anniversary event for Renegade Wrestling Alliance new newly re- redesigned uh, website over there so shout out to our boy Wheels for this one um, but there's gonna be a boot camp match there's going to be a dog collar <laughs> match uh, tag team championship uh, the cruiserweights are gonna be in action and I'm trying to find the rest of the match but it's gonna be insane Ch- I'm talking to Chachi beforehand. And of course, we're we're splitting the teams up, and we're not going to have live switching for this. So it's going to take a little days for this, a couple of days for this thing to get out. And, and I was told, um, I'm, I'm I'm really glad that we're not tethered for this one, because there is a boot camp match, a dog collar match, and a street fight uh, throughout oh the night. And when there's a street fight, like they almost practically go, sometimes they do go to the street. I, I, this has happened in the past, by the way. Um, here. <laughs> um and, and it's a uh, it's a pretty good. Um, a mix of guys, a lot of talent in there. Ashton Amherst, Ryan Rain, uh, 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 Nick S. Bon Taylor, uh, uh, Memphis Mofo, Shane Andrews. Um, those names you need to pay attention to. Uh, really talented guys um, doing a lot of stuff. And I don't know, are the women doing stuff? They got to be. Jesse Bell Smother is usually a part of this. She's on the on the bill as well. But I haven't seen any plans for what they're doing there. Lots of videos. If you want to get to know the wrestlers, Memphis Mofo, Mofo, as we mentioned in the past, does a lot of great YouTube stuff. The Mofo Show is a lot of fun with that, so go please check that out. Um, oh, look at the beard he's rocking there. Oh, Mofo with the beard. <laughs> it's the winter look, I suppose. Uh, playoff beard, right? Yeah, that's what no they call play- it. There's no playoffs in wrestling. But anyways, um, that's all I got. I mean, is there anything else uh, wrestling-wise, indie-wise, we need to touch on there? Good aiming. Well, I do think uh, the good fans, you know, that uh, have been checking us out here on the Indie Mayhem Show should go to IndieWrestling.us. And if they want to recap on everything that will be happening, that has happened in Indie Wrestling, to check out uh, Matt Carlin's Great Around the Indies column uh, that he puts up there every week, uh, go check it out uh, again over at IndieWrestling.us and, and, and get caught up on everything Indie. Awesome. Yeah, go check it out. Uh, and, and there's a lot of articles up there about uh, 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 guys that have popped up in WWE uh, that are that have been through, like Tommy Dreamer, Kalisto, for the former Samurai Del Sol. You'll find a lot of stuff in there. CM Punk from uh, back in the day. Uh, I guess he's a UFC fighter or something these days. I, I, I don't know. Um, and, and, <laughs> and, and so much more. Uh, so, I mean, that's all I got for uh, Indy this week. We got a really great interview uh, scheduled in the coming weeks. We talked to Jimmy Corderas, former WWE ref. Got to got to work with him uh, a while ago for the refereeing one on one, and got to catch up with him and see what's going on. Look for that next week on the Indie Mayhem Show one oh nine. Eamon, it's good talking with you as always about the indie as wrestling always. and what's going on in the world 
of indies. I don't. I, I, it, it'll be great because you you've had a show under your belt. I think since since uh, this year already, right? And and I have not. Mm-hmm. So I'm <laughs> I'm itchy. I'm itchy for wrestling. Is making me itchy. <laughs> and uh, it'll, it'll do that sometimes. I mean, as we know, like I went to a couple of shows uh, last month and didn't get to get any. Uh, unfortunately, in February because my way my schedule works out. So we're back to that phase of my life. Um, so, uh, but but again, kind of checking everybody out and see what's going on. And uh, and it's really interesting. Um, actually, before we go, I I, I had an interesting encounter last week. Uh, I'd like to share with you, Eamon, and the, and the people. Because you never know when you're going to run into, um, when wrestling is going to kind of touch your life. Uh, so yeah. so I, as you guys, and some of the, you know, we're doing a lot of stuff here in, in the Beachview area here in Pittsburgh. And, and, I, and I mentioned before, like, there's, there was wrestling here like three blocks from my house, which is like a freaking awesome thing that I can say. Uh, the awesome guys down at the KSWA. By the way, shout outs to them. They actually are starting to do some video content. So look up a uh, Keystone keystone wrestling association kswa.net kswa uh pittsburgh based here in um on facebook um i know some of the guys involved in it uh, and it's a really good crew um and just not a lot of video typically so we don't talk about it here on the show um but i'm at i've been going to community meetings lately okay i know this, this is a weird tangent but um and then there's a lot of stuff going on with the the train and the busing system. And there was a community meeting and it got weird and awkward and stuff. But still, I got to go and kind of get a little more connected with my community around me. Um, then I meet Mike the Barber. Mike the Barber was uh, originally introduced to me as uh, at the wrestling show by the announcer as the unofficial mayor of Beachview. Mind you, Beachview is a neighborhood in the city of Pittsburgh, so we could not <laughs> ever have a mayor. Uh, but Mike the Barber is a, is a wrestler um, to the point where he did a run-in from his food truck that was in the parking lot that the wrestling was set up, which was amazing, by the way, and just like took some dude out. Um, but yeah. I got to meet him uh, and, and make his acquaintance, and, um, and uh, I, I think I'm going to go get my hair cut up there sometime. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, shout out to Mike the Bar- Barber, um, awesome representative of, uh, of, of, of the uh, community and a pro wrestler and, and – uh, and, uh, and and that was a really cool moment to be like, oh, hi, I do a podcast about wrestling. I think we should have a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, that's all I got, Eamon. Uh, let me know when you run into when a when a wrestler cuts your hair, and uh, we can pull up stories as well. Oh, uh, I can I can only I can only help. I, I mean, I, fans of the mansion know I mean, do need a haircut. So, by the way, side note, I am super jealous of you, good sir. I don't think you were on Ray- Mayhem show yet tonight when we discovered this, but mm-hmm. apparently Lucha Underground is doing a live show at South by Southwest. You son of a bitch! They are. They are actually already sold out. Oh. Oh, well, never mind. They're doing on today. Really? Because uh, that, that's what South by Southwest will do to you. But, um, Jeez. But, hey, no, it's awesome, though. And, and I believe they're also doing a panel uh, uh, beforehand uh, with some of the creators and, and a few other people. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it, I love it. It's, it's going to be an interesting time. Uh, uh, I, w- I hope I can find some way to make it out to there. I'll Easy. say that. Use your use your wiles. Use your your commentary wiles. Be like, don't you My know? You gotta wiles. you gotta go up there. You gotta be. You gotta you gotta go up there. Walk up to the door and say, "Do you know who I am?" <laughs> and that will go over really well. I am Amen of Inspire Pro Wrestling and lesser so of the Indie Mayhem Show, and <laughs> I demand to know where Montanza is. <laughs> and then I will be promptly escorted out. Of the I have, and as you as you are being escorted out, I have shared the internet with Chris and Joseph. You know, that's true. What, hey, I don't know. Twice. Yeah. That is a fact. That is a fact. That, that, that's a true thing that happens. You know, you know. Then you just yell "Midweek War" in your best Mad Mike impression, and, and then Chris will, and then Chris will notice it like it's a bat symbol or something. Chris, and, and Chris to Joseph. I was going to say, I almost said the wrong words. Then Chris LaRusso will just pop up out of nowhere, which would be really weird. He has nothing <laughs> to do really, with the gender. Yeah. I'd be like, what are you doing down here, Chris? And Chris, Chris to Joseph will just pop up and be like, oh, come on in. <laughs> oh, I don't know where this is going. Uh, guys, thank you so much uh, for, 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 for 
going through this this week. Uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. <laughs> Check out Indie Mayhem Show and all the rest of the shows over there on uh, all the podcasting outlets and video outlets. Uh, YouTube, Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. The, the, the lot of them. You can drop us a line. Let us know uh, what you uh, think of the show, especially. Uh, don't, don't let us know this week, please. Um, <laughs> and uh, and uh, 412-206-WMS0 or good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Eamon, he's at Eamon2, please, on the Twitter. Check out InspireProWrestling.com as well. I'm at Sorgatron, SorgatronMedia.com. Thank you, everybody. And please support Indie Wrestling. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.